Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be using the legendary Pokemon, at least according to its Pokedex entry, Arcanine, Arcanunu, Arcanine, Arcana, I don't know. We're going to call it different things throughout the run, but we can all agree, no matter which pronunciation I settle on, I got it wrong. So that's cool. Anyway, Arcanine has really, really good stats for Generation 1. However, they're very even. With an average base stat of 91, it's tied for 9th with Executor. The other 8 we have all used already, and they've all performed relatively well. Arcanine has a couple things going for it. It is a Pokemon that evolves via Evolutionary Stone, so it will not learn any other moves via Level Up. However, it starts off with Ember, I'd rather Flamethrower, but Ember's okay, and Takedown to give it some decent attacking moves. Even though it's not very effective, Ember is usually okay versus Brock, but we are going to battle all the bug catchers in Viridian Forest just in case. But Arcanine is not going to level up as much as you expect because it's in the slow level up group. Still better than missing though, but other than Mew, which I don't think was really supposed to be in the game to start with, the rest of the top 17 Pokemon in terms of base stats all are in the slow level up group, which helps explain why things like Executor and Starmie that nowadays are relatively underpowered are still in the slow level up group. In Generation 1, without the special attack, special defense split, they were really, really good. As we said, our canine is 9th, so it's going to be in the slow level up group too, and that's going to put it at a bit of a disadvantage to other fire Pokemon, and as we've seen, fire Pokemon, generally speaking, have struggled with the game. But I'm hoping our canine's good base attack and the fact it can learn dig might help it eke out a good time. So we can start with Brock, and the Brock battles are use Ember and Hope. Unfortunately, in this battle, I don't get like any defense girls, and Geodude deals about 7 damage per attack. That is until it gets burned. Now, Ember doesn't have a very high chance to burn, only 10%. However, if we do get a burn, then Geodude is only going to be dealing 4 damage or less, half damage, and even if Brock heals, which he will, it's still going to be doing the reduced damage. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to burn, and so although in my next attempt, I do make it all the way to Onyx, I just don't have enough HP. So I decide to battle the Junior Trainer, gain another level, and with that, I figured Brock would be a lot easier. It turns out I was correct. By leveling up, Tackle from Geodude only did 6 damage as opposed to 7, which did matter. And because of that, I actually ended up having more than enough HP to knock out both Geodude. With Onyx, you can go for Leer or Growl when it goes for Bide. Or you could try to use Leer and Takedown, but I don't recommend that. Takedown, by the way, is 90 base power which is better than Mega Punch, but it also has an 85% chance of missing. J-Rose, don't you mean it has an 85% chance of hitting? Well, it feels like it has an 85% chance of missing, especially in a clutch moment. So we're going to delete it for Body Slam, but we got a ways to go until we get Body Slam. Before we do that, we have to battle the Cerulean Gauntlet, which I've never called it before, but feels like what it actually is. Rival 2 is the better option because Misty knows water moves, and we're a fire type. Unfortunately, even though our canine is very powerful, because we don't level up enough, Pidgeotto is a 3-hit KO. And Pidgeotto, if it has a chance to use Sand Attack, Takedown already with its terrible accuracy seems to never hit. And then, when it does, you get dealt recoil damage, which put me in range for Squirtle to knock me out with Water Gun. Now, I battled Rival 2 again and again and again. Takedown luck was a big factor. It's why I go for Leer, because it's one less takedown. I also should use it as little as possible, even if it costs me time, because it's not worth losing the HP. This isn't actually true against Rattata, because Rattata deals a bunch of damage to me, and I actually come really close to losing to Squirtle, but in the end... Amber doesn't deal enough and I lose. <laughs> Fake out! I'm the king of them! Uh, thankfully, in the next battle, I do win. And again, it just comes down to takedown luck. 
I abandon using Leer and get two takedowns. The second one crits. I go for Ember against Abra since it can't actually attack me. Now against Rattata, I go for takedown and I'm at 28 HP. It's going to be a 2 hit KO. And even though Bubble was used, I have 8 HP to spare. So because we didn't get Sand Attack or any takedown misses, we were able to defeat Rival 2. And thankfully, there isn't any other difficult trainers on Nugget Bridge. The only thing that's difficult is that you're going to lose a lot of HP because takedown deals recoil damage. So you're going to have to heal at the Pokemon Center or make sure you buy Super Potions. One of the two. They both kind of waste time. Why don't you just use Ember Jaros? Well, the problem is Ember just doesn't deal enough. Take down one shots almost everything. Well, Ember, it's a two or three hit KO, even on weak Pokemon like Rattata. So it just really didn't work. Speaking of things that didn't work, battling Misty was not fun. Now, I didn't battle Misty right away. Instead, I decided to battle the Rocket because he gives me the TM for Dig. Dig is 10 base power higher than Takedown, and it doesn't have a chance to miss. So it's the perfect move to use against Misty. Except, it does take two turns to use, and while you're underground, Misty can use an X Defend, and although it probably would be a 1 hit KO, with an X Defend it's not, and then Starmie is able to knock me out. I could tell from this, I wasn't going to win at this level, but there is one additional swimmer here. So, I decided to battle the swimmer in order to gain another level, hopefully. Regrettably, I wasn't actually able to level up, but I will probably when I knock out Staryu. So, hopefully, I can level up and outspeed Starmie. That would make things a lot easier. We get another X Defend. We're at 54 HP again. And then we use takedown, then we level up, so we're at 54. But no, Starmie is still outspeeding. And although we get a critical hit, Misty's AI will only, and I mean only, go for water moves. Now, the other thing I could do, theoretically, is use my rare candies here. Maybe at level 22, I would be able to outspeed Misty. Certainly, I can't really see how I could win, because Water Gun, well, I mean, Bubble Beam nearly knocks me out, and... I don't think I would survive two water guns. We can't get luck on Staryu. I would like to see what would happen if Staryu just doesn't use X Defend. Finally, it happens. We knock it out, we level up, and now this time, Bubble Beam crits. It just, this is how the battle went. This is how the battle went. Now, I did this battle a lot, and while well, theoretically, there was a way to win. Basically, here's what would have need to have happened. I need to go for Dig, no X Defend, one shot on Staryu. Starmie uses Water Gun, I go for Dig, no X Defend, and then that needs to repeat. The chance of all that happening isn't actually all that high, so what I decided to do, I was only 35 experience points away from leveling up, and I went into the grass to beat one wild Pokemon. It will waste a little bit of time, but I do plan on using my rare candies and trying this at level 23. With a speed of 55, I hope to outspeed Starmie, but if you know how to do Pokemon math, you'll know that that actually isn't going to happen. I don't have badge boosts. And speaking of badges, J Rose, why don't you just skip Misty and go battle Lieutenant Surge? He'll be so much easier. Well, the truth of the matter is, oh, we almost survived two bubble beams. But the truth of the matter is, the problem with Lieutenant Surge is that you need Cut to access his gym. I've talked about this a lot because routing would be so much better if I could just battle Surge first, but you need to beat Misty in order to get cut, so Surge can never be the second gym leader you battle, at least if you don't resort to trading between games or something like that, which we don't allow. And for a Pokemon like Arcanine, that's really, really frustrating, and I was really starting to get annoyed that I'd actually leveled up three times. I actually look right here. Did I actually level up? I, I couldn't believe how bad things were going. But the luck would balance itself out. I would get a Generation 1 miss with Water Gun and easily destroy the Starmie, which I didn't like because I wanted to prove I didn't need something that outrageous to win, that I was just getting exceptionally bad luck and that it shouldn't be so crazy. And sure enough, I do get two Water Guns, but you can clearly see I could have tanked a Water Gun and a Bubble Beam as long as neither crit. 
which they shouldn't. So I think my chance of winning was something like, I don't know, 40%. And yet it took me like, I don't know how many tries, a lot more than it should have. But that happens sometimes. There's not much you can do. And that's why I go by in-game time. I mean, in an RPG, it's hard to control for luck, but I find that in-game time helps to a degree. Now that we finally defeated Misty, things are going to speed up quite a bit. Our canine can learn Body Slam, and while Body Slam won't paralyze normal Pokemon in Generation 1, it does nearly one-shot Pidgeotto, and then we outspeed and knock it out. It does actually outspeed and knock out both Raticate and Kadabra. As for War Turtle, unsurprisingly, it's not a one-shot, but Water Gun does next to nothing, and we're easily able to win. And speaking of easily able to win, I don't think Lieutenant Surge is going to be difficult at all. In fact, I have a pretty strong feeling, yep, Body Slam one-shots Voltorb, and it's going to one-shot Pikachu, and uh-oh, I meant to go for Dig. Oh my! <laughs> I misclick. He gets a crit with his most powerful move, and I still win! I still win! That's, that's great. For the first time in a long time, we don't have to talk about Rock Tunnel whatsoever. There is nothing in Rock Tunnel that our canine can't stand up to with either Ember, Dig, or Body Slam. So we can skip ahead to Celadon where, unlike usually, we're going to battle Erica first. Now, despite the fact that Ember is super effective, Body Slam actually will probably deal more damage. And Victory Ball has to go for Wrap because we're a fire type. Dig does more than Body Slam, but unfortunately get a bad range, don't knock out Victory Bell, it heals, but Rap giveth and Rap taketh away, it misses, and I'm able to knock it out with Dig. Against Tangela, I wanted to see if Ember would knock it out, and it does, but with a crit. Now, against Vileplume, we don't need to be that careful. I go for Body Slam, I get a crit, I paralyze, and it doesn't attack. I go for Body Slam again, Unfortunately, it just survives, but we're able to knock it out easily the next turn. You might be wondering, why is Vileplume able to use Grass Attacks when Victory Bell isn't? That's because Vileplume only knows Grass Attacks. And so, if a Pokemon with good AI only knows moves that are not very effective, it can use those moves. Otherwise, it has to use neutral, or preferably, super effective moves. Okay, so now we can make it to the Rocket Game Corner. And we'll battle Giovanni. Giovanni should be relatively easy. Onyx has good defense, but Dig one-shots, although with a crit. Rhyhorn, it might just one-shot. It does. And then Kangaskhan, it has good defense, but it goes for Rage. So I can go for Ember. And then, if I really want to, I can go for Dig. And that's a pretty easy victory. Now, I do make a mistake here. And it's a mistake that's easy to make. I forgot to heal in Celadon City. And the problem with that is I have not collected Fly. So I am going to have to battle Giovanni again. This is going to waste a couple minutes as I have to take the elevator in order to leave. But it's really not a big deal. And speaking of things that aren't a big deal after I do my shopping, we're going to be able to battle Rival 4. Even though we're in the slow level up group, Rival 4 is still relatively underleveled. We don't one shot with Body Slam, but Pidgeotto doesn't do anything. Then we one-shot Growlithe, we one-shot Execute, we one-shot Kadabra, and we two-shot Wartortle. Because we have Dig, the Ghost Pokemon will be easy. And now we have to decide where we're going to go next. It is a little bit of a difficult decision, because we are going to be under-leveled. But because we do have a ground move, I'm going to try and battle Koga next. Unfortunately, I forgot the full restore in Safari Zone. So, I had to start this battle poisoned and at half HP, but we do one-shot coughing number one. We don't one-shot muck, and its sludge nearly knocks me out. That's not good. Because of level up, I could have theoretically won, I thought. Now, nah, I lost a poison, but if I had just a little more HP, Weezing could have gone for self-destruct, and we could have won. But, regrettably, I'm going to have to go back to the Pokemon Center, but I don't think this is going to be too difficult if I had full HP. Now I do my real attempt versus Koga. I go for Dig, and it's a one-shot. Hopefully Muck doesn't go, ah, minimize, and I miss. So thankfully it doesn't attack, ah, we get another miss, and it's used a lot of X attacks, another miss with Poison Gas after I missed, 
Finally, Muck lands an attack. Thankfully, it's poison gas after all those X attacks, but we are able to knock it out at full HP. We will lose a little damage to poison, but we knock out coughing, and now, no self-destruct. All right, just don't use it now. Perfect, X attack. Could have gone better. Muck was definitely very annoying, but it was a fairly easy victory. Something that may not be too common going forward. Because this is where Pokemon the slow level up group really struggle. They're very under leveled, and it's not like our canine has a crazy good move pool. It has a ground move and a normal move and a very weak fire move. There's not much it can do to rival Fival, and I have a feeling I might have to use my rare candies again much earlier than I want. As always, rival Fival leads with his trusty Pidgeot. I go for Body Slam, and it's going to be a three hit KO. We then get hit with Sand Attack on the second turn, and that's bad, because although we crit against Growlithe, and we haven't missed yet against... Oh, there we do. We missed against Execute on the second hit. Thankfully, it misses as well, but you're about to see a miss. Hey, I called it. I didn't even know, but that was a big problem. We do get the Paralysis, and you know what? Honestly, if we didn't miss so much, we might have been able to win. So this might go a lot better than I was thinking. Turns out I was right, or wrong. Well, I was right the first time. Pidgeot went much better this time, since it didn't use Sand Attack. I go for Ember, trying for a burn. It's a 3 hit KO anyway. Well, maybe just because of the crit. Growlithe is still a 1 hit KO, because we got a crit. And Execute, it does put me to sleep. And then it uses Leech Seed, which is annoying, but we are able to knock it out. So Alakazam, we don't one-shot. And if we did, things would be okay. But then there's Blastoise. Even with the crit, Blastoise is Water Gun. I mean, it crit as well, but that's doing just way too much damage. So what I think I'm going to do is level up a little bit versus the trainers in Sylph Company. I mean, look how fast this battle just was. That took like five seconds, and we're at level 37. So you know what? I'm going to try one more time. If I lose, I'll use Rare Candies. And if I don't lose, well, then I don't have to do that. So Quick Attack, Body Slam is good. Another Body Slam Whirlwind. Okay, no Sand Attacks. Are we going to one-shot? Well, we will if I use Dig. Two down. I go for Ember. Reflect is fine. Three down. Please one-shot. I'm going to go for Dig. It doesn't. But thankfully, Alakazam didn't go for Reflect. It does hit me with Confusion. For an 84 HP for Blastoise. I go for Body Slam. It's about a 4 KO. Bubble, I lose Speed, which is annoying because now Water Gun outspeeds. And even without a crit, we pretty much lost, but we get the clutch paralysis. I'm going to go for dig, and it's just enough to knock out Blastoise. Phew, that was close. I would have used rare candies, but saving them for later is preferable. I mean, it will allow me to gain more levels, which might be necessary. But our canine's big issues right now is that its move pool, while better than something like Flareon, it's just not as good as something like Charizard. And while its stats are better, I would rather have way less defense and special and just a ton more attack. I just want it specialized in one of the offensive stats. In a way, our canine is seeming like a jack of all trades, master of none. But because of its terrible move pool, it's really jack of no trades, master of none. But it can use body slam, so that's all right. I mean, thank goodness it learns Dig. It made Giovanni 2 not so bad. But things probably are going to get really difficult later in the game. Not now, though. We're going to head to Blaine, partially to get Badge Boost, but mostly to get Fire Blast, a huge upgrade on Ember. Like Takedown, it can miss 15% of the time, but we will take that. Blaine leads with Growlithe. We, of course, have our Canine. We go for Dig. Even though we are underleveled, we still have speed in one shot. Same thing is true of Ponyta. Same thing is true of Rapidash. And, well, we outspeed. We don't one shot our canine. And we don't even two shocks. So I go for Body Slam. But we never get attacked. And so we have defeated Blaine. We can teach Fire Blast. And the last gym leader before Giovanni 3 is Sabrina who shouldn't be that big a deal because of our fairly even stats, we should be able to one-shot and even outspeed. Sabrina leads with Kadabra, as she always does. We go for Body Slam, we outspeed and one-shot. 
Mr. Mime? We outspeed. We don't one-shot, but that's okay. Light screen doesn't matter. Fire Blast hits. We one-shot Venomoth. Psy Wave. We one-shot Alakazam, although I think the crit mattered. But that's okay. I was hoping for the paralysis, but I'll take a crit. That's seven gym leaders down. One more to go. That one more is going to be Giovanni number three. And although I don't think it's going to be the quickest battle per se, it's still going to be very easy. All right. Well, Giovanni leads with Rhyhorn. We're going to go for Dig. And we two-shot it, which is fine. Well, I'm going to go for Fire Blast. Try and save a turn. We hit. Good. We outspeed Doug Trio and Body Slam does one-shot. But unfortunately, I don't think Dig is going to one-shot Nidoqueen. It doesn't. Thankfully, neither Nido King or Nido Queen know ground moves, nor does Rhydon. I do go for Fire Blast, but Dig does do more, especially if it crits. And we beat Giovanni very easily, although it would have been nice to one-shot. Now, I see that we're 2,700 experience points away from leveling up, and that means if we beat this trainer right in front of Giovanni, We'll level up as soon as we knock out Rhydon. Unfortunately, I get really bad luck versus Nidoking. I should have just gone for Dig, but I can just reset. The point is, if we want to use Rare Candies, it's efficient. If we want to use Badge Boost Glitch, Badge Boost Glitch, yes, we can do that. It's efficient. And now you're curious what I'm talking about. So let's talk about why Rival 6 Badge Boost Glitch will be super, super useful. Rival 6's Pidgeot knows agility. Now, we weren't using our fourth move spot, so we can use Mimic to get Agility, and each time we use it, we're gaining a little more in all our stats. Thankfully, Pidgeot cooperates, and we even get a crit and knock it out. But, as it turns out, I was a little off on my math, so we level up after Pidgeot. And that means Rhyhorn's gonna be a 2 KO. It also means Growlithe isn't a one-shot with Body Slam, although it uses Leer. We do one-shot Execute, and we outspeed Alakazam, we don't knock it out immediately, but Reflect is fine. The bigger deal is Blastoise. I mean, what I should be doing after I lose this battle... Wait, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? How many times did he use Withdraw in a row? Okay, that's nuts. But what I was going to do is we could have just not used Agility, knocked out Pidgeot, and then set up against Rhyhorn or Growlithe. It would have been perfectly fine. That worked too. So, I'll take the win. Unfortunately, once again I forget strength, but this time I realized it a little quicker than usual. Sometimes I try to move the rocks in Victory Road and I notice, hey, I can't do that yet. So that's unfortunate, it's gonna waste a few minutes, but I don't think that's going to matter. Why? Because I think the Elite Four is gonna be really, really tough. Technically, Laura Lee is an Ice-type Elite Four member, but Four of her Pokemon are Water-type. In fact, Slowbro isn't even Ice-type. Bruno should be fine. Bruno's always fine. Agatha is going to be the easiest because we have Dig. But Lance's Gyarados proves an impenetrable barrier for many Fire Pokemon. If we could learn something like Rock Slide, maybe. But we can't. So how is the Elite Four going to go? Am I wrong? Probably not. I'm pretty good at this. But I've been wrong before, so, you know, never say never. Well, Laura Lee leads with Dugong. It doesn't know a water move. Fire Blast doesn't even do half. So I think we should just go for Body Slam. It's going to be a 3 KO, but I get a crit, which is good. We knock it out. Cloyster, I go for Fire Blast. Its special isn't very good, but it's good enough to repel my Fire Blast. And then it goes for Clamp, which can last between 2 and 5 turns. And of course, it gets 5 turns. We knock out Cloyster, but now my strategy is ruined. I plan to mimic Amnesia and use that to sweep through Laura Lee's team, but with just a sliver of HP left, that's not going to happen. Let's try again. I miss with Fire Blast and Aurora Beam lowers my attack. I have to go for Fire Blast and I miss again. Dugong tries to go to sleep, but I haven't actually attacked it yet. So I hit with Fire Blast, Dugong is burned, that decreases the power of takedown, and Fire Blast knocks out Dugong. Now, I use Fire Blast against Cloyster, but I only have two left. And I did want to use it against the final three Pokemon. So, Slowbro uses one Water Gun. It can alternate between Water Gun and Withdraw, because they're both water moves. I decide to go for Fire Blast after three Amnesias. I do knock out Slowbro, and thankfully I get a crit against Jinx, which probably mattered, because I knock it out in one hit, 
and I outspeed Lapras, I don't miss, and Fire Blast allows me to get to Bruno for the very first time. Now, Bruno shouldn't be too, too difficult, but I don't think Dig is going to one-shot the Onyx, and especially after that X defend, uh, there's Harden. So it's going to be a three-hit KO, which is annoying. Now, Body Slam is actually the worst thing I could have done, and I misclicked, because Hitmonchan knows counter. Had it used that, I would have lost. Thankfully, I got a crit, and it didn't use counter, so double good. Now we just have to sweep through the rest of Bruno's team. Nothing too exciting. Nothing is a one-hit KO, though. So, really annoying that I'm not even able to one-hit KO a Bruno Pokemon, but I should be able to one-hit KO Agatha's Pokemon, who should be the easiest Elite Four member based on our matchup. We outspeed and go for Dig. It's a one-shot. Go about to go for Fire Blast. And shockingly, it only does like 80%. And then it hits me with Super Sonic, which is really annoying. So that's like a 50-50 chance. Thankfully, speaking of 50-50 chances, I don't hit myself in Confusion. We knock it out with Body Slam. But if we hit ourselves in Confusion here, oh, that's good. Haunter could have put us to sleep. But it doesn't. And we're able to one-shot Gengar that swaps in from Arbok. And we're able to one-shot Arbok, which I expected anyway. None of this matters. We legitimately have nothing to deal with Lance's Gyarados. Our most powerful physical attack is Dig, Immune. Our most powerful special attack is Fire Blast, Resist. We're stuck with 85 base power Body Slam and no way to set up Swords Dance or anything like that. I hope this goes better than I'm worried it's gonna go, but I don't know. So, we outspeed, we get a Paralysis, and a Clutch Hydro Pump miss. So if we win, that's why. Okay. Now I go over by something. Yes, no, no, double no. So we got the crit. We don't knock it out. And because of the way the AI works, it's at low enough HP to get a retroactive hyper potion. Annoying. Well, wouldn't you know, we get a second consecutive critical hit. This time Hydro Pump hits. And oh boy, does it do a lot of damage. We're able to, okay. We're not able to knock out Gyarados. And because of the paralysis, it doesn't attack us. Oh my god, this is not good. We do knock it out now. I have to go for Dig against Dragonair because I can't afford to have it hit me. Even Dragon Rage would have left me at 2 HP. Thankfully, it goes for Slam, misses, and I knock it out with Body Slam. I go for Dig again. This time, Dragonair goes for Agility. It does hit with Slam, but I have 13 hit points left. And now I have 16. And Hyper Beam miss. That's good. Fire Blast hit. It's going to be a 3 KO and a burn. But unfortunately, we get hit with Super Sonic. We hit ourselves in confusion. And even if we didn't, Aerodactyl was very likely going to knock me out with Bite or Takedown or something. This is not going to work. Now, when I first started these challenges, I would have gone back and tried to beat Lance again and again and again, only to give up and then do exactly what I'm going to do here and level up. But I can tell you right now, this isn't going to happen unless one of two or both happen. Number one, Hydro Pump cannot deal more than half of my HP. And number two, we probably want to be doing half of its HP with Body Slam. Neither were particularly close. So I'm going to have to battle a ton of trainers in Victory Road. This is why using Rare Candies late is so great. If we'd used the rare candies and saved, we might lose a level or two battling these trainers. But because other than the ones I used against Misty, I never used the rare candies, we can battle those trainers at a lower level. The rare candies are definitely not necessary for us to beat these trainers. And hopefully after we're done, it's going to take us two different attempts because we have low power points. So we're going to have to go back. But once we beat all the trainers we can, hopefully then... We're ready to defeat Lance. Well, we're able to make it to level 59. And Body Slam's not going to be a 2 KO. Not a big deal. But I decided to go for Dig. And Dig actually with the Body Slam is a 2 KO. That's pretty cool. Cloyster, not quite a 1 KO with Fire Blast. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's pretty bad. Because Cloyster can just knock us out. So we might have to level up a little bit more to make the Loralee battle more consistent. And although I mess up here, you can see I still haven't saved after using Rare Candies because I'm not convinced we've leveled up enough 
and we may want to go somewhere else in order to level up, but we'll see. Okay, so we try again at level 59 this time, and we go over Body Slam, Dugong goes for Rest, and that means we'll knock it out with three Body Slam. Cloyster, okay, it's a range, so that's kind of nice. And this is the consistency we would want. We have more than enough HP for Slowbro. We use three Amnesias. Fire Blast knocks it out since we have Max Special. Body Slam does knock out Jinx at this level. And we do miss with Fire Blast, but this is the other side of Amnesia. Our defense is boosted, Lapras doesn't get a crit, and we're able to knock it out with Fire Blast. Bruno really is just as easy as he was last time. So we're just gonna kind of skip ahead. There's nothing really to talk about him or Agatha. So instead of talking about them, I'm just going to show you those battles. And we're going to talk about Lance because it's not just the Gyarados that's an issue. Aerodactyl is equally as annoying because we have zero moves that deal neutral damage. Now, in theory, if I were just really trying to get a Hydro Pump miss, I could mimic Hydro Pump and that would probably one shot the Aerodactyl but I think that's a pretty inconsistent strategy. And this is why I don't save between Elite Four members. If I did, that is 100% what I would do because it's creative and it looks cool and it works. But when you want consistency, that is not good enough. What we need in terms of consistency, we might need a miss, but we definitely need to get a little bit of buffer room. That means this cannot do more than half my HP. I need to do more, let's see. Nah, we're doing about a third. So it is paralyzed, but once again, we get the retroactive hyper potion. And so we go for body slam again and <laughs> okay, a miss, another body slam, one hydro pump, and we're at 55 HP. And this is with insane luck. So we're in the same situation as last time and I go for dig, it still doesn't knock out dragon air. Thankfully, it just keeps spamming agility. So we lose no HP here. I try to get the Paralysis on Dragonair, I don't get it, it does hit with Slam, and we knock it out. Now Aerodactyl, we have slightly more HP, but I have no hopes, and I miss with Fire Blast, and it hits with Hyper Beam. We're not ready yet, and I have an idea of how we can get ready. I think the fastest and most efficient way to gain experience points, which I clearly need, is to battle the Elite Four again and again. I don't think at this point, any of the first three members can really put up much of a challenge. Cloyster's a bit of a range, but after just one playthrough, it'll probably stop being a range. And we can just battle again and again and again. Now, we can use potions, because we can just buy more of those, or full restores, but we can't use ethers or elixirs. I mean, we could use one maybe, but not that many, because we can't get those back. And so, I need to be very, very sure if I use one, that that's a battle I want to keep, or we waste time, right? Not in-game time, real time. Each one of these runs takes about three to five minutes, and typically our canine gains at least two levels per Elite Four run. Also, because it's so consistent, I get many, many attempts at Lance in order to see my progress. I don't use a potion here, but we're still not doing half, and Hydro Bump is clearly doing more than half. I actually get a crit, which is just more free experience, and Dragoner knocks us out, but notice, I'm just gonna buy a bunch more full restores. Keep in mind, in generation one, when you lose, your money gets halved. So investing in a bunch of full restores is pretty helpful, but yeah, I'm just gonna battle again and again and again. We're not close, we need to do half, and or Gyarados needs to do less than half. Two levels higher, we're at level 63, and not quite half, we get the miss we want, but, when Hydro Bump does it, it's doing like three quarters. So that's not good enough. Body Slam doesn't knock out Dragonair, but I don't really care. At this point, I pretty much assume the battle is over. We get a crit, so we get to Aerodactyl. And we get a crit on Aerodactyl, which is really nice. Unfortunately, it's not enough to knock it out. And after Aerodactyl heals, it hits me with Bite. Closer, still not close enough. And yes, time is ticking away, but what can we do? We've actually been getting exceptionally good luck versus Lance, and yet we still haven't even made it to Dragonite. And the good luck kind of continues. We get the paralysis, and we come very close to it being a 2-hit KO, but not quite. And because of that, 
Gyarados is able to knock me out. Now, at this point, we're getting close, and maybe I should use an elixir, but I'm not sure yet. I decide not to use the elixir and to keep the experience points, and good thing I did, because we're doing just under half with Body Slam, and Gyarados is doing just over half with Hydro Pump. We're so, so close. We almost knock it out. Another couple levels will be perfect. So I made the right decision, and this Elite Four battle, I'm gonna have to save. We have enough full restores. We're ready. This is the one I'm going to keep. We lose, we just reset, but I'm gonna use elixirs and play this one for real. So the strategy versus Dugong, unless it uses Growl, we just use Body Slam. But if it does, that's okay. We're pretty much using Fire Blast against everything else anyway. I mean, theoretically, it could cause some problems with Jinx, but it probably won't. Slowbro obviously is a one-shot. I mean, you guys have seen this before. We actually can probably just skip ahead to Lance. It is cool to see that when you do miss with Fire Blast, Amnesia offers a really good buffer, but there's not too much more going on with Laura Lee now that we've leveled up. And there's also not much more going on with Bruno. I don't use a potion because I don't need to. And Dig is a 1 KO against Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, unless Bruno goes for X Defend, in which case it's not on either unless I get a critical hit. But actually, it looks like I was wrong. Onyx is a 1 KO with Dig. And look at that, Machamp's a 1 KO with Fire Blast. That's the first time that's happened. So I wasn't sure if I was going to use Elixir. I was kind of getting cold feet. And when in doubt, don't use it. We don't need it for Agatha. We have, oh, well, we had one Fire Blast left. And now we're confused. Oh, we might have lost. Oh, we snapped out of confusion. Cool, cool. So now we won. And I got to decide. Do I want to use the Elixir? I need Fire Blast for Aerodactyl. So if I decide against it, I'm conceding this loss. It's a tough call, but I'm going to do it. Just like I said I was. I'm going to stick with the plan. I'm going to stick with the plan. I think we're ready. Let's go. Okay. So we're going to go over Body Slam. Paralyzed. Oh my god, this is going to be easy. Like, come on. I feel like I overleveled now. I didn't, but wow. Now because I have full HP, I can actually mimic agility because I have HP to waste against Dragonair. That means Body Slam will one-shot against Dragonair and Dragonair number two. I can now use Fire Blast against Aerodactyl, which is burned and thus does nothing with Bite. Dragonite, I go for Body Slam and oh, whoa. Okay, that was a one in four chance. And if I didn't use agility, we would have lost. So that was a really lucky battle. We've been getting exceptional luck versus Lance. And yet still, this is my first victory in I think five or six attempts. I've lost count. But one thing I can count on is the champion being difficult. Blastoise especially, it's high defense. I have nothing to use, can't mimic agility. I have an idea. It's probably a very bad idea, but let's try it. I'm not optimistic here, but it would be nice if we could get the win. Okay, I'm gonna go for Body Slam, and that's what I didn't wanna see? Okay, thank goodness. We can't paralyze Pidgeot, but it could paralyze me, and thankfully it doesn't, and we knock it out. Now, Alakazam, I'm gonna go for Dig, get a little bit more damage, and we don't get Reflect. That's what we needed. All right, we knock it out, two down. Rhydon, in theory, we could probably go for Badge Boost, but I need to see when I level up. Now, what I mean is Rhydon can go for Leer and Tail Whip. I can just go for Body Slam, hoping to get those, and then maybe it would help me versus Blastoise. But because we only have 3,000 experience till we level up, we would level up way before that, so it's not going to be helpful. In fact, we get a crit, and after we knock out our canine, I'm pretty sure, yeah, we level up. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Here's my terrible, terrible strategy. I'm going to mimic Hypnosis. Now, oh, goes for Stomp. It didn't go for Hypnosis. Crit's fine. All right, let's just go for... No, okay. I meant to go for Fire Blast, I promise. And please hit. All right, very good. Here is where I want to go for Hypnosis. Yes! All right, he's asleep. Body Slam. Oh my... Wow! The luck was in... 
incredible. And that just speaks to how not great our canine was at this run. I mean, we could have been stuck for another half hour at least. I wouldn't have been surprised if in an alternate universe that took me three or four attempts. And level 70? 441? For a Pokemon in the top 10 of base stats? This is nowhere near one of the best Pokemon in Generation 1 for a solo run. Not even close. Where would I put it? I mean, it feels like it should go in the formerly Jinx tier with Weezing and now Arcanine. The ninth highest of all Pokemon, yet just inside the top 30 of fully evolved Pokemon. And there are many, many good fully evolved Pokemon we have yet to use. Like Kangaskhan, Poliwrath, heck, even Seedra might do better. It's hard to know. What I do know is that the month of J-Rose is continuing a little longer than I expected. This actually wasn't done intentionally, but some of the runs we have left, you're gonna definitely want to see. I don't think you'll be disappointed by them. Until then, take care everybody.